Welcome to another session of Lectures by Lobizi. I'm Dr. Lobizi. Today we'll be talking about communism. This will be the final in a um, video series about economics. So we discussed first capitalism, then socialism, and now communism. Um, one of the things that I've maintained throughout all of these videos is that um, the difference between socialism and communism. And I think... Um, People are often confused or they misunderstand. Uh, I think they sometimes conflate what um, socialism and communism is. Um, in the last video, I talked about socialism as the uh, governmental control of uh, the economy and uh, private property and uh, ownership of big businesses. Uh, some people believe that um, communism is governmental control governmental uh, control of the means of production, uh, like the Soviet Union and in China uh, up until recently. And I think the reason why people believe that and think that is because uh, the political parties that run the country are called communist. Uh, the same is true in North Korea and in Cuba. Um, but that <clears throat> is not uh, what they are. Uh, people also uh, confuse uh, socialism with um, certain countries in Europe. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as the Scandinavian model. Uh, countries like uh, Norway and Sweden and to a lesser degree Finland and uh, Denmark. They, they say, well, with, with these countries, um, the government controls major, uh, the, like the largest factories or the major industries, uh, but that there is still a um, private ownership of small businesses. So that's what people sometimes believe is socialism. That's not, that's not what socialism is. So, that, that is called a mixed economic system. And um, that's what the United States is. Um, in fact, the United States is not a purely capitalistic country. Uh, if it was, there would be no governmental involvement or very, very little governmental involvement in our um, economy. Uh, and that's just not the case. Um, there, there's a lot of governmental uh, regulation over the U.S. economy. And so uh, although we're <clears throat> on a spectrum closer to capitalism than socialism, we're still a mixed uh, economic um system. So those Scandinavian countries, they're mixed too. They're just closer to a, a socialistic model. Um, but communism uh, is actually no governmental uh, involvement, sort of similar to capitalism, uh, because it's not necessary. Um, communism is what Karl Marx predicted would eventually happen. Uh, he predicted that capitalism would fall and that for a period of time it would be replaced by socialism. Uh, but then uh, once government was no longer necessary, and I'll get into this, uh, but once government was no longer necessary, the final result would be communism. And that would be sort of like a utopian uh, society. And that's what Karl Marx predicted. Okay. So Karl Marx was a German uh, intellectual, um, a historian, an economist. I mean, he was a brilliant man. Um, he teamed up with uh, another German um, uh, intellectual, and his name was Friedrich Engels. And they collaborated on... Um, the Communist Manifesto. Uh, Karl Marx is kind of uh, seen as the, the um, I don't know, he gets m more credit than Friedrich Engels on um, on these pieces. But uh, yeah, he goes down, Karl Marx is one of the most significant, uh, you know, second maybe to uh, only Adam Smith as far as economists go. But um, <clears throat> so in uh, this uh, piece that was published, The Communist Manifesto, in 1848, uh, he made a lot of observations and uh, predictions, okay? And uh, so he said that um, 
he studied history and uh he said that throughout history there has always been a struggle a class struggle between the rich and the poor or as he called it the haves and the have-nots and that through all uh through all history there have uh, been periods of conflict uh, between those two and when the uh, exploitation of the have-nots by the haves the rich the ruling class uh, got too severe then they would rise up um, and the, what he was living through uh, Karl Marx uh, was the Industrial Revolution and, and he believed that the Industrial Revolution was creating a level of exploitation of the working class the likes uh, of which history has never seen before and that high degree of exploitation was going to inevitably lead to revolution okay and he believed wholeheartedly that revolution violent revolution would be necessary um to like unseat those uh people who were in charge okay and so he calls on uh, the working uh, man uh, throughout the world to unite uh, and kind of create a brotherhood. And, and he believed that um, at, at some point um, the, the workers of the world would unite and they would develop what is what he called something called class consciousness and that they would no longer kind of see themselves as different from one another even people of different countries, uh, that they would see that they're all being exploited uh, by the man, uh, by the bourgeoisie, as that's a term he used um, for the haves, the bourgeoisie, and that um, the proletariat, the working class, the, the have-nots, would, would unite. And uh, w once they did, they would violently overthrow not only uh, the factories, but also government, okay? And then he says, after that takes place, there would be a period of uh, socialism, which he called the dictatorship of the proletariat. So the working class would take over the factories, would take over the government, and there would be um, a, a dictatorship, uh, socialism would be necessary to kind of undo the evils of capitalism and um, that <clears throat> people uh, would need to be sort of re-educated so that they understood that property was the root of all evil it is property according to Ad uh, <laughs> Karl Marx that there is all vice you know um, greed and theft and everything that's bad is due to property and if we would simply get rid of property uh, then there, there would be none of that there would be no crime there would be no greed there would be no war um, there would be no theft okay so um, it would take a long time it would take a number of years uh, to convince people um, of the evils of property and that competition was bad and that the solution, the alternative, was cooperation, uh, shared uh, property, and that that would take a long time. And some people uh, would resist. Those people who were the bourgeoisie, th they would resist um, the, the most. And he advocated, um, you know, sort of getting rid of those people, all right? And... Um, uh, eventually, eventually, uh, a classless uh, society would emerge and people would begin to uh, live cooperatively. And <clears throat> at that point, government would no longer be necessary because uh, things would, would sort of run by themselves. There would be sort of like a, a natural law that would take over and societies would run uh, peacefully and cooperatively together and um, the, the, the workers would decide everything that they need uh, and they would produce whatever is necessary and they would share it amongst uh, the various, you know, citizens, I guess. Um, 
So that's uh, what he predicted. Um, and there was a communist uh, overthrow in Russia, uh, which later becomes known as the Soviet Union, uh, followed by uh, China. Yeah, let me move, move my head uh, if I can over here. Um, this is Ho Chi, or so this is Vladimir Lenin, uh, led the uh, Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, Mao Zedong in China, uh, Ho Chi Minh uh, in Vietnam, and Fidel Castro in uh, Cuba. The unfortunate reality is, um, the of the 20th century is that uh, communism has brought uh, a lot of a lot of death. Uh, millions, somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 million people have died. Uh, in uh, communist revolutions, uh, and that the uh, the the number of um, other casualties, just like human suffering, I mean it's 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 the greatest producer of human suffering in the in the twentieth century by by some estimates. Um, there are you know communist apologists, those people who defend it and say that uh, the people who uh, implement it. It were uh, flawed uh, that communism could work, would work if executed properly. <laughs> um, that's an experiment I don't know how many people are willing to take because of uh, w w what's already taken place. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the people uh, who have led these uh, communist revolutions were unwilling uh, to give away power uh, once they achieved it. And that could be because power corrupts. Uh, it's it's likely that that's the case. But um, <clears throat> so that is why I still maintain, as I did in the beginning of this video, uh, that communism has never existed. Not to say that there weren't communist or communist parties. I'm not saying that. And there, there still are um, communists today. Uh, but what we have seen in the Soviet Union and China, among other countries, is socialism because they never got to the phase that Karl Marx predicted. Um, I'll say that there's a lot of different variations of socialism. There are lots of different versions of communism. There's Marxism, Leninism, Stalinism. There's all sorts of different kinds. And so maybe under somebody's definition, you know, communism has existed, but by and large, if we're going by Karl Marx, who was the originer, you know, he originated this theory, uh, communism hasn't existed um, because that's the final stage, uh, only socialism. All right. So I hope that clears things up. I hope that makes sense. Um, but um, yeah, thanks for watching uh, and I'll see you next time.